You remember in last week's video, Biogas 101, I told you about all the different types of biogas digesters. The commercial ones that uh, are powering towns and cities. The commercial ones that are making a farm completely autonomous for its energy needs. And I told you about the MAD system, the micro anaerobic digester, the small ones that you can have at home. They'll eat all of your waste, supply fertilizer for your garden, and provide you with free methane mix cooking gas. Hello and welcome back to Tiny House and Off Grid Resources, the channel where we rebuild, repair, recycle, instead of nipping down to the shops and buying a new one. From there, I guess we started narrowing things down a bit and we looked at the different types of mad digester, the floating drum, the lightly pressurized bladder, and the one that has risen to the surface, if you like, the one that has become the most common micro anaerobic digester is what has become known as the Solar Cities. IBC, which is the intermediate bulk container. The caged forkliftable liquid tanks that we see around the place that carry liquid food and chemicals. They're available pretty cheap at the end of their use and they're a, and they're a reasonable sized footprint and they can be insulated and don't take up too much room on the average person's garden floor plan. So th those coupled with a little bit of plumbing are pretty much all you need to get gas production underway. Now I've got all my pipe work on its way. Um, I did go down to the local hardware store and looked at buying the various items of pipe work that I needed from there and I was horrified at the price I had to pay. So a little bit of work online and I soon had those same items from the same manufacturers at about 25% of the price from a place on the internet that specialises. There will be a link to them for the New Zealand watchers of this movie down below in the comments. But choosing the right biodigester for you. It's a little bit like deciding that we're going to get a pet. Are you a cat person? Or are you a dog person? Perhaps you're a dragon person. <laughs> because if you're a dragon person, then Having a methane digester in your garden is going to be a great substitute for something that's getting hard to find in the pet shops nowadays. So once you've decided that a cat or a dog is a little bit too mundane for your new lifestyle and you've settled on a dragon, you've got to decide what kind of dragon do you want. Do you want a friendly dragon that's going to look nice and not scare anybody who wanders into the garden? Or would you like a big lazy one that just lays back farting all day in the sunniest spot of your garden? A mad system, a micro anaerobic digester, really is just like having an animal in your garden. It needs to be fed, it has to be mucked out occasionally, and you've got to keep it warm at night. In return, it's going to provide you with cooking gas and nutrition for your garden. Well, I actually didn't want either of those, so I, that's why I opted for my version of the Solar Cities IBC, the Intermediate Bulk Container System. It's a small footprint, it's only one meter square. The materials to build it are readily available. In fact, I have spare IBCs right here on the property. All it's going to cost me is a little bit of hardware, which of course is plumbing pipes. Some digesters are very family friendly and have a clean, sharp 
manufactured look. Others, well, they need to have their bums wiped occasionally. Some designs just don't lend themselves to a domestic application. The reason this one is so dirty is because each time the gas runs out, the inner sleeve drops down and dips into the slurry, bringing up a new coating of slurry each time to bake on in the sunshine. Um, so there's a fresh, a fresh new smell every day. If you've got the space and the facilities, you could build yourself something really permanent that's semi in the ground. The rest of it is an attractive construction from concrete or adobe and it can last for many, many years providing you good service. The Solar Cities concept of the IBC container is really, really simple, but it's 10 years old and in those 10 years of looking at it, I've found other people who have made improvements to it and I've had ideas of my own. This one I'm building, although it's going to follow this format, there will be two or three significant improvements that I'm really eager to share with you. You can see here that these people have adopted IBCs for the gas storage as well. They've used the rising dome and used the cage to keep it in line, which is a great idea if you can find IBCs that will slide inside each other. That's because different manufacturers make them to very slightly different dimensions. Yeah, they all hold 1,000 litres, which is about 262 gallons, but they, some make them slightly taller, some make them slightly lower and squat, and that's great because if you can get the right brand, you'll find that one will slip inside the other, and you can make this system. This system uses clean water as a seal, so you'd end, you don't end up with that slurry buildup on the outside of the tank. In my opinion, whichever design you choose to use, paint it black. Put it in full sunshine and make sure that it gets a good varied diet. The great thing about the gas storage system is that the higher it goes, the more weight is being supported by the gas, so the more pressure the gas has. These are awesome if you have to push the gas a fair old distance to where it's going to be used. On this design here, these people have incorporated 20 litre buckets into the design. That means that the 1000 litre chamber can be filled completely and the gas collection area, the delivery chamber and the leachate outlet are all inside these separate buckets, meaning that you've got more volume and a longer hydraulic retention time. This is great if you're feeding your biodigester harder to digest um, feedstock, like slightly woody plants or um, biscuits and baking rather than soft pulpy vegetables. Every photo I see of one of these on the net gives me new inspiration. I can see that these people are very pleased with what they've built. Um, I can see a couple of flaws in it. For example, to fill it you have to pour the liquid in at head height. Don't know why they've done that. But one of the things I do see is that they're holding strings of pine cones. There was no explanation. I just looked at the photograph and I've realized what those strings of pine cones are for. They have a massive surface area and those dropped into the tank are going to increase the surface area for these lovely little microbes to live on. The more surface area, the quicker reaction time you have. So if you can introduce something that doesn't have a lot of bulk but has a lot of surface area, that's going to help give an environment for your microbes to live and flourish in. There's an awful lot of institutions and associations that can take advantage of this. When you've got a lot of people, you've got a lot of food scraps. One of these systems could produce all of the cooking gas needed for an institution or an association where people are gathering on a regular basis. So come on, don't be shy. With gas prices going the way they are, we should all be running something like this. It's well within your capabilities to do it. Look, please, do try this at home. 
make it happen make it happen around the world i'm going to keep plugging this the next video is where i actually build the belly of the beast so don't miss that that will be in about one week's time as soon as i've organized a few little logistics i've just got to get some stuff into the right areas and i need friends to come and give me a lift and a push and we'll make this happen so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel do that now that way you'll get a notification and you won't miss this up and coming video down the track when i've got this whole series up on youtube there will be prompts on screen that'll appear up here until then subscribe to the channel that way you can keep an eye on what's coming up and you'll know when that video is due it's due about one week from now one really important aspect that we haven't discussed yet is your geographic location. What's the weather like where you live year round? What are your seasonal averages? The three families of methogens, they're the little bacteria that are going to break down your food and create the gas for you, are called philophilic, thermophilic and mesophilic. And those three families operate in three strata. Your phileophilic, they're the ones that help dead animals rot in the Arctic. Even in really cold weather, there is some decomposition going on. There has to be, otherwise nothing would get fed in the world. Moving up the chain is the mesophilic range. The mesophilic bacteria, they're the ones that live inside our stomach, live on our skin, live in the environment around us. They're the ones that really get the job done most often in most situations. And above them, you've got the thermophilic. Those are the hardy ones that can even live in the boiling mud pools of thermal areas like New Zealand's Rotorua or America's Yellowstone National Park or in the Icelandic mud pools. These things have been the building blocks of nature. They're called the archons. They are the f bacteria that was around since there was nothing more than gas oozing swamps. They were the microbes that got things moving. They created food so that other species could flourish. And you're going to have them working for you when you build one of these. 